So just a little bit more work on section 2.8, which talks about uh, derivative of a function. Well, we're first gonna start with continuity and a little reminder about continuity. So looking at the graph, can you tell me what points the, the function is not continuous at or what intervals the function is continuous on? Either one. So maybe Talia, you could help us out there, please. Um, I'm gonna try my best. Okay, that's all I can ask. Um, so it seems to be from starting from the left-hand side, it start, mm -hmm. seems to be continuous from negative six to negative three. Mm -hmm. Good. And then we see it kind of stop. Right. So then- it Has a jump discontinuity there. Yes. So negative three to zero. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. And then we would go again from zero to three. Good. And then we see that, um, what is it, the jump? Um, yeah, it's another jump discontinuity at three. Yes, um, three to um, onwards. I'm sorry, I can't see the end of the... Yeah, those three to infinity would be fine. Okay, okay. three to infinity. We'll just assume that, but yeah, perfect, perfect. So in terms of intervals, it would look something like this. Now, I'm pretty sure that for the interval negative three to zero, the book's gonna regard this as being right continuous because this feeds into this limit at three and the function is defined there to be the same thing. So it'd be right continuous there, meaning you would use a bracket. You're actually gonna include this as being part of the interval that it's continuous. Same thing, I think at three, let's just double check there. Yeah, at three, the function is again continuous. So looking good there. Awesome, awesome. Thank you, Talia. Would uh, negative six have a bracket as well? Uh, yeah, actually, good call. Thank you. Yeah, negative six would also have a bracket. So that one would be uh, left continuous. Yeah, I should put a bracket there. Could you show the answers real quick? Yeah, there you Thank go. Thank you. Mm-hmm. So the next thing we need to look at, and it's not necessarily look at um, the graph, but let's remind ourselves places where a function is not differentiable. So, or reasons why it's not differentiable. What are some of the reasons why a function would fail to have a derivative? There's three of them that we discussed. What were those? If f of x has a discontinuity, Good, so it's discontinuous, awesome. What else, what else? Corner points. Corner points, good, corner points. And there's one more that's actually present in this graph, or at least I tried to make it present in this graph. Vertical North tangent. Vertical tangent. Now in a face-to-face -face class, when I'm writing my own exams, and you're not doing them on my math lab or something like that, then typically I ask this question and then I give you a graph. And the idea is that it's kind of like a hint. It's like, okay, you wanna apply the question two to answer question three. So the question is, where is this not differentiable? At what points? Now we're not gonna worry about the end point here at six, uh, but other than that, what points uh, is this function not differentiable at? Um, let's see, maybe we need a volunteer here. Uh, Michelle, Michelle B, um, can you help mm -hmm. out here? Yeah. Where, where would this function not be differentiable? What points? Negative five, negative three, zero. Mm -hmm. Good. Three and four. Perfect, perfect. Um, there's one more that I'd throw in there. One negative. more. Go ahead. Negative one. Negative one, good. So at negative five, you've got a corner point. 
what's happening here, if you, have to, if you remember the definition of the derivative, it really gives you the slope of a tangent line. But when you're looking for the slope of a tangent line from the left, it looks like positive one, and from the right, it looks like negative one. So that limit's not gonna exist because the limit from the left and the limit from the right are gonna be different. So it's not gonna be defined here. Here you have a discontinuity. What's going on at negative one that you don't have a derivative here? Can anyone tell what's going on there? It's vertical. Yeah, thanks, Cole. I've got a vertical tangent there. Another discontinuity, jump discontinuity. This one's not a jump discontinuity. What kind of discontinuity do you have at four? Undefined. Mm -hmm. yeah, so you can find it up here. Oh, the dots up there. Yeah, sneaky on that one. So what, what, what kind of discontinuity is this one? Removable. Removable. Thanks, Michelle. So that's a removable discontinuity at four. Nice. So to continue on with this graph, let's take a look at the next question down here. What's the limit of this function as x approaches four? In other words, and I couldn't do it justice there with decimals, but this is what we're looking at. What's the limit as x approaches four? Now, I gave you a hint, it's not an integer. And I guess if I wanted to, I could try and do this uh, on the y-axis. We'll make a step at 0.5. There you go. So as you're approaching four along the x-axis, what y value are, are you approaching? Quarter. Yeah, about 0.25. Thank you. Nice. Now, is the function continuous there? No. Nope. No, it's not continuous there. And the reason it's not continuous there is because the limit doesn't equal the value of the function. And that's something that has to be true if something is going to be continuous. So um, if f of x was continuous at x equal 4, then the limit as x approaches 4 of f of x should equal f of 4. So the value of the function at that point should equal its limit. It doesn't. So it's not continuous at that point. You can kind of see an example that is continuous over here at negative 5. The limit as x approaches negative 5 is two, and the value of the function there is also two. So it's continuous there. It's not continuous here. What else do I have for you? A couple more here. And again, this is this is how I would set it up on a face-to-face -face test. Unfortunately, you're not gonna have quite that opportunity here this semester, but we'll try and make up for it in different ways. The limit as x approaches zero from the positive side, that'd be from the right side. So what's that limit going to be? Infinity. Infinity. Nice. Nice. Who was that? I didn't catch that. Oh, that was me, Matt. Matt. Hey, thanks, Matt. Matt, all yeah, right. No um, so yeah, infinity. How about from the other side as we approach from the left? Three. Someone else want to get that one? Three. Three. Nice. So on the one hand, we have infinity. On the other hand, we have three. What's that say overall? Does not exist. Does not exist. Good. Because the limit from the right and the limit from the left have to be equal for this limit to exist. So sometimes you'll see them do this in the homework. They'll kind of build this up. They'll say, all right, what's the limit from the left? What's the limit from the right? What's the limit overall? Uh, sometimes they won't. Sometimes they'll just say, okay, what's the limit? But you have to realize that when they're asking you for the limit, even if they don't ask you for the limit from the left and the limit from the right, you have to think about those to make sure that those are equal in order for this to exist. If these two don't equal, this doesn't exist. So nice. So a little bit of a review there. I have a question. For some of those things. Yeah, Aditi. Please. Um, if there's a, re a removable discontinuity at four, then 
Um, why is one of the continuous intervals from three to infinity? Oh, you know what? We should have had, yeah, thank you. That's, that's a good catch. Um, let's see here. So if you be from three to four and then from four to infinity. Yeah, nice. Cause it's not differentiable um, or continuous at four. Cool. Being differentiable is a more stringent condition than being continuous. You can have functions that are continuous at places that aren't differentiable. In fact, I don't know if I'll get around to it this semester or not, but the Cox snowflake um, or Cook snowflake, I'm not sure how it's pronounced, um, is pretty interesting because it's continuous everywhere, but differentiable nowhere. And it has some other just really bizarre properties about it. So if you talk to me about it sometime or get me talking about it, uh, it's kind of cool. Anything else on these? I'm hoping this refreshes your memory on some things and brings a few concepts together. That'd be great. Um, all right. Let's do one that's from the book or from WebAssign, I should say. And that'd be this one here. So they give you the graph of a function and ask for the graph of the derivative. So we're gonna have to do what Einstein did a lot of, a Gedankaden experiment, a thought experiment, to try and figure out what the derivative of this is gonna look like. Now, keep in mind that the derivative at any point tells you how the function is changing. So starting here at this left-hand endpoint, what's happening with the function at this left-hand endpoint? Well, is it increasing, decreasing, or staying the same, or what's it doing? Decreasing. 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 So is its derivative gonna be positive or negative? Negative. Negative. It's going to be negative, all right? And the derivative is going to be negative until we get to a place where the function starts increasing. So where does the function start increasing? You know, well, about right here. Right here. So the function starts increasing there. And actually, for a moment, you have this transition. The function is decreasing and then starts increasing. But in between, what's happening with the function right here? How is it changing? It's got a horizontal tangent line and the slope of the tangent line there would be what? Zero. Zero. So here's what's going on with the function. It's gonna start, it's gonna have a negative derivative to the left of this point. Then it's gonna cross zero and then it's gonna have a positive derivative until we get to say this point. What's gonna happen with the derivative right here? It's gonna be zero. Yeah, nice. It's, uh, well, um, actually, I appreciate you, um, you uh, helping out this morning, but let's think about it. What kind of a point is that? We just talked about that just a minute ago. Point. It's a corner point. What happens with the derivative at a corner point? Someone around remind me? Uh, it doesn't yeah, doesn't, it doesn't exist. So if we're to try and draw a sketch of the derivative function, I'd probably start at, yeah, I don't know. I mean, this is all just kind of speculation, a little bit of a guess, but our derivative has to pass through the x-axis right here because in passing through the x-axis right here, that's where the derivative is zero. And the slope of the tangent line to your graph of f has to be zero there. So here, and the function is gonna have a positive derivative up until we get to So, so far our derivative is gonna look like that. 
then what happens to the derivative? Or what happens to the slope of the change line? Is the function increasing, decreasing, or neither? Decreasing. Decreasing. It's decreasing. Okay. In fact, there's something unique about the way it decreases. It's decreasing at a constant rate, right? So your, your graph here of the derivative has to reflect two things. It has to be uh, it has to be negative. But it all has to be. It also has to be constant. So it's going to look like, say, this, right there. So it's decreasing at a constant rate, and that's what's happening here. You've got a constant negative value for the function. The one other little detail that's missing about this is the fact that. The derivative is not defined right here. So let me just scroll down to the answer that you would see or one of the choices that you would see if you're doing this problem on WebAssign. And that would be this. Here's your graph. Notice very importantly that the graph of the derivative is showing a nice little hole right here and down here because the function is not defined in terms of its derivative. It's not defined at that corner point. How's that one looking? You'll definitely face some problems like that in terms of um, the homework. So if you have something that's nagging you about that, here's a good time to ask. Another one that you could face would be something like this says the figure shows the graphs of f, f prime, and f double prime. So we haven't talked about f double prime yet. But if f prime is the first derivative, can anyone take a guess at what f double prime might be? The second. Der second derivative. Second derivative, yeah. Thank you, the second derivative. So you're gonna differentiate something and then differentiate that function again. Now that second derivative actually tells us a lot of interesting things. We'll see more about that in chapter three and four. But for right now, let's just think about the slope of the tangent line and we'll just pick one of these functions and say, okay, if this is my function, what would the derivative look like? So I think I wanna start with B here. Let's think about B. And the reason I like to start with B is because um, I've got a nice point that I can see here where the function kind of maxes out, all right? The function is going to be increasing, increasing, increasing until we get here. And then what happens to the function at that point? Decreases. It decreases. And in that little transition right here, the function should go from having a positive derivative to having a negative derivative. And let's look down at our graph. If we look down at our graph, then, oh, the graph of C looks pretty good. So the graph of C is positive, meaning it's the function's increasing, increasing, increasing. It's still increasing, although the rate of increase is slowing down until we get to here. So until we get to here, the derivative is all positive. And then the function starts decreasing. And then you have a negative derivative the rest of the way. Although after a while, the function does seem to kind of level off. So you've got a derivative which is close to zero. And the story that's told by this graph seems to be mimicked pretty well in terms of a derivative by C. So it certainly looks like graph B could be our function. Let's see, uh, let's do this. F equals graph B and then F prime would equal C. 
let's just see if if f prime is c does uh graph a seem to make sense for f double prime so let's see if we're talking about graph c then well, let's see no we're talking about graph a so the derivative of c should be graph a uh, i'm not sure i'm liking that let's see because c would be increasing would have a derivative which is increasing until we got to this point right here Mm, that's not looking quite right. Wouldn't B possibly be f of x and then? So what if A is f of x, right? Is that what you're saying? All right, somebody was out there. Yeah, it was me. I, I muted myself. I thought it would, it would be B being f of x at first um if b is well we have b is f of x but maybe a is f of x and then well, let's take a look here so uh yeah because the derivative of c doesn't look like a so maybe a is f of x so let's do f of f would be a and then f prime would be b and f double prime would be c so let's see if that works out for us so um let's think about a then let's see if that works out for us so a is increasing until we get to a maximum and it's kind of hard to tell but a does have a maximum it does start decreasing so at what point does the graph start decreasing? Well, about here. Is that fair to say? So until we get to that point, what should be true about the derivative, the graph of the derivative? Should be positive. Should be positive. Thank you, Marley. Should be positive. And if you look at B, it's positive until we get to right here. And then the graph has or dies below the x axis, it's negative, meaning that the function is decreasing and a is decreasing right there in that interval. So this looks good. F is a, f prime is b, and f double prime is c. Nice. All right. The good news for you is that when you're trying to figure out a, b, and c, there's only six choices. So at least you've got an 18% chance of guessing correctly. Comments or thoughts on that one before we move on from section 2.8? All right.